Hello all, this is going to be about the, the different partitioning schemes you can use in Linux uh, and as well as the file systems uh, that are used for different directories. Um, I've made a simple uh, partition scheme here. Uh, let me show you here. Uh, the root partition is just the extension for, that's the pretty much the standard nowadays. Uh, the home Part, uh, partition, separate partition is XFS and the VAR I made a separate partition for that and that's Weezer file system okay uh, part of the reason for that was to make the boot up a little quicker and also to make it more efficient as far as um, the system goes, the operating system goes um, for example uh, if I do a system D dash analyze, zoom in here, oh, wrong button, and press enter, it comes back as approximately 13 seconds or so to boot uh, basically to the uh, splash screen, the login screen. Now, previously, uh, same setup of, of GNOME 3 and uh, Arch Linux, I used extension 4 and one root partition and uh, a swap partition. And the boot time at that point was around 90 seconds. And I've been using this for about a week now and it's been pretty consistent. Um, it goes up to 15, I've seen it, and it goes down to... 11, 12 seconds or so. So it's not scientific, but it seems that uh, how the partitions are uh, set up on the hard drive and the type of file system you use uh, can actually enhance the boot performance. Uh, now I'm talking about a mechanical hard drive, just a basic spinning. I'm not talking about a solid state disk. If I was using solid state, I would probably just use extension 4. And that's about it. But uh, since it's mechanical, I'm trying different uh, partition partitions and file systems. So I'm going to go through uh, installing Arch Linux and uh, the steps that I use to uh, get this sort of uh, layout, I guess, uh, you would use. Okay, so here I am at the an Arch Linux installation and uh, there are several different ways you can partition the hard drive. You can use something as something like Gparted and boot into that and set it up. But I'm just going to use the one uh, CF disk. Now in this case I don't have to specify the hard drive but I'll just type it in anyway uh, just to give you an idea. So slash dev slash SDA now we have another hard drive or several that could be STB, STC, um, and so on. So just be aware of that, okay? You don't want to format uh, another operating system by accident. Okay, once we're in there, um, I've allocated approximately 30 gigabytes of space. And the first uh, one we're going to do is the root partition. And that's going to be primary. And the size is going to be 10 gigs. And that's at the beginning. And we're going to make that bootable. So you hit where it says bootable at the bottom. And you can see under flags at the top, it's on, it says name SDA1 now and flags boot. Okay, now as far as the size, Uh, the Arch Linux gives you recommendations, 15 to 20 gigabytes. Obviously, um, it doesn't really matter because this is just a virtual machine. Uh, VAR, which is the next one we're going to do, uh, 8 to 12. And your home could be as large as you want, how much space you have. And swap, that will vary. Um, so, let's look at uh, Reezer. Now, the thing is, is I noticed that uh, the part where it talked about that for using VAR under just the basic reason 
file system is gone. <laughs> oh well. So this one I don't use. I don't think we can yet. Um, according to this, it's not yet uh, kernel 3 and above, 3.0 series. Uh, but if you look here, often used in VAR. Um, and another reason is uh, if you have like a raid and stuff like that, this, this can be kind of a, a good uh, system to use. As well as the other one, the XS, XFS, which is going to be the home directory. Okay, so go back over here. Um, new primary again. I'm going to just make it 8. Oops, not 5, 8. 8 gigabytes. And the next partition, I'm going to make primary again. This will be swap. I'm just going to uh, 2, 0, 4, 8, 2 gigs. And uh, I gave this virtual machine 4 gigs of RAM. So that should be good enough anyway. And I can put that at the end. So I'm going to have to arrow down. Where is this SDA3? And the type is going to be 82. There we go. And you can see there it's now uh, a swap file. So arrow up one more. New. Primary. The rest is yours. That's going to be the home. Okay. Now we just arrow over to where it says right. Press enter and type yes. And it's been done. So now we just uh, uh, type Q to quit. And if you want to do a reference, you can just do that again and just queue out of there. So now on to making the file system. Uh, the boot I'm just going to leave as extension 4. So it's mkfs.ext4 slash dev another slash sda1 and then press enter. Okay, back for reference. The next one is going to be uh, our VAR. So this one's going to be uh, MK Re Reaser FS slash dev SDA2. Well, I hope I spelled that right. And it's giving me a warning all time to be lost, of course. And I'll just type in Y. Uh, there's nothing on here, so. There we go. So, Reaser file system is now on SDA2. Let's go back to our reference. And now we're going to do the uh, home partition. Now, that one's going to be um, extension. Um, XFS, sorry, not extension. Yeah. XFS. Now, there is uh, warnings about data corruption. Um, and they give you how to repair it examples. Performance enhancements, you can um, put these in your file system tab layout, uh, but they give you warnings about that. And the stripe and width and all that is, good, is um, they give you another how to calculate that if you're using RAID, but in this case we're not using RAID. Um, yes, it, get, it does get defragmented. It does get fragmented, and they show you how to defragment it, but not that much though. Okay. So, uh, back over here, um, mkfs.xfs, and device sda, uh, sorry, sda4, I believe, and press enter, and it basically puts the layout for you, okay, and like I said, I'm not using RAID, or anything so we don't have to worry too much about the attributes even though there's a lot there you can specify and finally swap nothing special mk swap vice sda3 and then just uh, swap on the same sda3 okay 
So how you can do uh, one more reference, and we can look now and see uh, the boot is uh, also the root, so it's extension four. Last DA two is the going to be our VAR director. That's a user file system. SDA4 is XFS and SDA3 is swap, of course. So, file system is made, partition is made, now we just have to mount them. So, mount and SDA1 uh, to mount. Done. And then we make a MKDIA slash MNT slash VAR. Right. Yes. yes. And then make our home directory. Okay, now we'll just mount uh, our VAR device SDA2 to slash MNT slash VAR. Okay. And mount our home SDA4. MNT slash MNT slash home. There we go. So now we have our partitions made, our file systems made, and our file systems mounted. So the next part will be installing it and just see how it performs. Okay, uh, to save some time, I just downloaded the packages and stuff. So the next part is to um, uh, generate a file system table. So it's the uh, command is G E N F S T A B slash M N T and then these two arrows to slash M N T E T C F S T A B and I'll just uh, shortcut for that and just do a nano on the M N T Etsy slash F S tab. Okay. Um, you can see SDA1 is extension 4, SDA2 is Reaser, and SDA4 is XFS in the swap. So we're good <laughs> for that. So we just do uh, arch uh, dash ch root to the mount. And clear the screen, ls. There we go. And uh, again, just to save the, some time, I'll uh, go ahead and install the rest of uh, uh, Arch Linux for getting the bootloader and the uh, locales and stuff uh, configured. Okay, yeah, everything went fine. Um, I'm back at the uh, root prompt. Um, I was able to log in. And just out of interest, I did a system D analyze and as you can see there, it's approximately four seconds. No, I don't have much on here. And um, that will obviously get uh, larger, the more software install. And of course, uh, the partitioning and all that probably doesn't affect too much in a virtual environment anyway. But I just thought I'd mention that out of interest. And if you want to do that, um, you need to download these two packages. Python to Cairo and Python to G object object. Uh, that'll download some other dependencies as well. But you can do that later when you get your uh, system, whatever you want to use. Uh, speaking of which, I decided to try KDE. I'm not very familiar with KDE. Okay, um, but as always, the Arch Linux uh, wiki is very good and thorough, and uh, you can install the full KDE. And there's two different methods. I think the meta is more for development side. That's what I'm gathering. Or you can do a minimal install and choose packages you want. And they suggest uh, various ways of going about that. If you use the KDE or GStreamer VLC, and it's pretty straight so straightforward. But I know KDE is is uh, fairly large and can be system intensive so I'm going to install that and I'll get back um, when that's done installing and we'll take a look at again at the uh, system de analyze just to get a rough idea how we did with that
Okay, I installed uh, KDE, uh, powered, powered off the virtual machine, so I'm just uh, going to press start and I'm get an idea how uh, our boot process goes. I'll let that run. It doesn't take it's five seconds. Okay, we're almost at the log. Wow, that's pretty quick. On a virtual machine. And KDE uh, is approximately two and a half gigabytes taken on the hard drive. And that's coming up fairly nicely. I also took the liberty of installing uh, Firefox as well, just another performance look, and there it goes. Okay, I guess the desktop is ready now. Um, so let's do a where's a terminal term console. We'll, I'll zoom in here because I okay. Um, so system D again. This is not scientific, okay, uh, at all, and this is just uh, you know just whatever. Okay, so approximately six seconds. So obviously, like I said, the more software you you add, it's going to go up. And again, it's this is not uh, anything conclusive. This is just stuff that I've put together and I've noticed. So if you want to try it out you know, it may be of interest to you, that's all. So that's pretty good, um, in my opinion. Um, I guess the best way to do it would be with a, a stopwatch, obviously, but, uh, and maybe a boot chart. A boot chart would be a good thing to get. I think you can get that in the uh, Pac-Man, I think there's one, and there's another one in the uh, user uh, repository. Um, if you wanted to mess around with looking at the boot chart and, uh, you know, what's taking up the most time to start. Uh, like I said, I'm not too familiar with uh, KDE and all its uh, programs and stuff, so I don't really know um, if this is good or bad or, you know, it seems, like, I mean, to me it's nice. Uh, where's Firefox? There it is. Yeah, it's not bad. And I bookmarked the welcome page. And just to run the HTML5. And I'll run that full screen. So that seems to be pretty good too. Full screen. With Flash. I mean HTML5. Uh, YouTube. And oops. Um, uh, Arch, One X. Oh, nice. Something like that. And seven twenty HD. So high as to had it and full screen. Yep. So everything seems to work out of the box. It seems pretty uh. Uh, responsive. Um, I'm not experiencing any lag here, even while I'm recording uh, the desktop as well, and uh, running a virtual machine. So, yeah, it's uh, I think it's worthwhile checking out. Anyway, there's like, like I said, if I was using a solid state drive, I might not be uh, as inclined to try so many different file systems. But this is uh, this is uh, pretty good. So with that said, um, considering this KDE, uh, that's pretty much a full-blown installation as far as I know. I, mean, I don't know KDE that well, so uh, you can tell me if I'm missing something. I don't know. <laughs> it's, this is not a review of KDE, but uh, it seems pretty good. And uh, responsiveness is uh, really well. And just for fun, let's do a shutdown and see how quick... Uh, 
arch will shut down. Just got the music there, and gone. So that's that's good. Okay, so um, if you have any questions or comments or, or anything, or you want to yell about something, uh, just go ahead and uh, add your uh, suggestions or comments. And uh, thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you soon. And bye for now.